Um, I'm a high school student and I often encounter situations that involve racism, either towards myself or others. Um, how can we change the mindsets of these racist thinkers? Ken Mike, I'll start with you. You've spoken very passionately about this. I've heard you already. Yeah, racism hurts. The comments that people make about you and your Aboriginality or any ethnicity leaves a mark. And I've had it several times throughout my life. And I shared in the forum uh, two days ago that as a child, racism was much more overt. The names we were called um, were the type of words we never hear, or we only hear them occasionally. But racism doesn't go away, because even in my current role, I still get barbs from people. I get the trolls on social uh, Facebook or through social media. I ignore them because I feel sorry for them. Because it means they haven't had the opportunity of sitting down with me or giving me the opportunity of having a conversation. Because I see myself no different to any other person. Because we have the capability, we have the skills, and we've shown that. It's about developing resilience. And resilience is being prepared to let it go over your head. My wife read a letter that I received and she got really upset. And she said to me, why aren't you reacting? And I said, because the moment I give attention to that person, they have won. By ignoring them and moving on, knowing that they've made that comment, it's like water sliding off a duck's back now. I've got used to that, but I will always champion and fight for people who are vulnerable to racism, and I will never reconcile from that. Nova, we, we heard from... Uh, thank you. We from the Australian of the Year, uh, Adam Goods, um, that what was said to him in the playground still mm. lives with him now. Mm. He can't forget it. He doesn't want to forget it. Yeah. And it still hurts. It, it does. And um, like Ken, like myself, like, you know, hundreds and, you know, pretty much or probably 90% of Aboriginal people have all suffered um, racism. And it hurts to the bone. And we are human beings. And we should not be judged upon the colour of our skin, you know, or our beliefs. And I have children, I have a grandson, and as a mother, um, like what Ken was saying, I teach my children to rise above it. And it is very difficult. And there's a, the old saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will ever hurt me. And, but it doesn't take away that, that pain and that, that suffering that you're endured just for being who you are. And, you know, you've got these sporting codes, like, like with Adam Gould's, um, the AFL, they've done an enormous amount of work for um, stamping out racism. But I will use this opportunity, um, as a politician, we've seen how, um, which, you know, this government is wanting to repeal the Racial Discrimination Act, which has served this country well, and its citizens who are vilified through racial discrimination for almost two decades. And when you have political figures, leaders, who are coming out and saying it's OK to be a bigot, it is not OK to be a bigot. It, racism is no OK. Not OK. We, I, do you mind if I just bring yeah. Ken in here? Because I, uh, that came from your side of politics, and mm. I know you reacted pretty strongly uh, to it at the time. I mean, do you think that change will ever happen to the Racial Discrimination Act? Look, I, I think what's happening now is 5,000 submissions, or approximately around that number, have come forward to the mm. Attorney General. I know that he's gone through them, and I know, and I can say categorically, when that comes back into the party room and we debate it, if it hasn't got the mechanisms for protection, then certainly I will be challenging that lack of uh, commitment. Still prepared to cross the floor on this? Look, on the principle, yes, I am. It's, I'm, I'm, on this, I want to transcend <laughs> above the politics. It's more about a principle of protecting vulnerable people. I know our mob get it all the time, but I know other cultural groups experience the same barbs and pain. And I don't want to see that happen. I made a comment to a group of people, in fact, I'll be open, I made the comment in the party room, I said, a lot of you in here will never experience racial vilification. It is only a handful of us in this party room that will feel that. And let me tell you that the pain of that stays with people, it scars them. 
and you've got to be strong to transcend that. So my position won't change, and I certainly hope that when the Attorney General brings it back, it has the protective measures in it and is not diminished. Joa, can I bring you back to the, the question that was asked from this young man who's experienced uh, racism in the playground. Is your community more sheltered from racism, or do you still feel it here? We still feel racism in our communities. But, you know, as an elder, or a man with families myself, I simply tell people, you know, just take my advice and ignore all of that. Just be proud of who you are, really. Proud of yourself and, you know, just simply walk away. <laughs>